tell us again. What happened to you, Mitch? We need to know any more history you might have with this being. <sighs> Alright. But I doubt you will believe me. This was about a week ago. My mother had worked hard to put me through college, saving up for years and years to put towards it. And after a few years, she finally had enough. But the catch was, the college was located very far from where I lived, about 30 miles if I had to guess. Luckily, my older brother Edwin had moved out of our parents' house a few years ago, and now occupies a place close to the college. My mother decided that I should go and move in with him. He had a stable job working for some tech company, and he had an off-the-table job of hunting from time to time. My brother was fine with me moving. In fact, he said he would appreciate the company, and he would teach me a thing or two about hunting. The move out was smooth enough. I packed my things and made it over to Edwin's home with no problem. I spent the first day getting used to the area. It was primarily surrounded by thick trees. Our place was like a cabin, stationed in a small clearing in between all of the brush. My brother showed me the impressive security camera setup that he had spent a lot of time on. Since he hunted and worked for a tech company in his own time, he had the know-how to properly place them and operate them. I'll skip ahead though. The first few days of the cabin were honestly very pleasant. I was greeted by sapphire blue skies, not a speck of grey from the clouds contaminating it. The college itself was everything I could have asked for. I loved learning all that I could about the path I wanted to pursue in life. But all of that changed. When I saw him. It was three days after I moved. I remember one time I was out with my brother. We were almost near to the town, but we had a ways to go. We were going to buy some more supplies. Until a nasty smell invaded our nostrils. I almost vomited at the disgusting scent. We tried our best to avoid the pungent scent. But as we continued down the trek, it just got even worse. I asked my brother what it could be. He suspected it might have been some dead animal. And that's exactly what it was. We found the cold, rotting corpse of a badger. He found no fatal damage to the throat or to the neck. This was unusual. The other animals typically didn't waste any time when it came to taking down prey. Wanting more information, Edwin knelt down and carefully examined the cadaver. He had no wounds to the head or neck, or even the head. The key to its death was a bit lower. After turning the thing over, we found two gigantic holes in it. Chunks of its flesh was missing, and not in a tidy manner. It was like something came and gnashed the squishy innards directly from inside of it. Upon looking closer, my brother realised the badger was missing its kidneys. Understandably, we got the hell out of Dodge. As we were speeding out of the woods towards town, I caught a glimpse of something. Something blue. At the time, I couldn't make out what it was. We did put serious distance between us and the corpse. After spending time in the town, the thought of whatever occurred retreated to the back of my mind. No animal body was on the trail by the time we returned. Maybe some other animal came and finished it off. But whatever it was, I would learn this would not be the end of it. And for the next two days or so, the same thing kept happening. My brother and I found the corpses of several animals just strung about arbitrarily. It ranged from barn owls, foxes, and even the likes of hedgehogs. 
I noticed that one of these animals had some kind of black liquid on it, partially staining the coat with a sticky texture. I didn't touch it. I mean, would you? Instead, I chose to just hide back at the house for the day. I caught a sight of something again, but I only managed to catch a glimpse before it quickly vanished. Whatever it was, it made itself scarce quickly. I remember talking to Edwin about it. He always tried to stay cool in these situations, and he reasoned it was most likely some kind of animal in the vicinity that chose our woods as its own personal hunting grounds. It didn't explain the black liquid though. It would be too easy to label it as some kind of waste from an animal. But the colour of black. It was too thick. It almost looked like tar. I felt anxious every second I stayed in the area. It got to the point of me developing insomnia. The next morning, it seemed as if things had finally gotten back to normal. We checked the area for any signs of death or another presence. Nothing. The smell of the clean air was present, no aroma of the deceased stagnated around. We went as far as to check the security system my brother had set up. We rolled back the footage between all of the days, and no such thing was out of the ordinary. The rest of the day was fine, until the evening struck. My brother told me he forgot to purchase some more hunting gear from the local stores. He needed to head back into town at once to grab what he needed. There was plenty of game out that night, and he wasn't going to miss the opportunity. I assured my brother I would be fine. I was given all the lessons about safety, how to secure a house, and in general just using common sense to avoid strangers. So I let him go on his way, and he left. For about an hour or so, I just sat bored, playing some video games, watching the animals run amok. I then remembered the security cameras. It was now getting dark out. The wind blew a gale through the trees. I was quite disappointed when I looked at the security cameras and was greeted with nothing. I didn't know if my brother had some form of night vision installed on these cameras. But despite the fact that I couldn't see, I could hear. I heard a strange noise come from the cameras. I couldn't describe it to you even if I tried. But to say it was from an unhuman being would be an understatement. I heard faint rustling sounds on the camera, like it was moving away. That camera was the furthest one away from the cabin than any of the other ones set up. It didn't happen again after that. I made the decision to try and catch up with some lost sleep. All the nights and insomnia were starting to take their toll on me, and my body was used to sleeping for seven hours or more on the daily. I woke up suddenly, only an hour or two later, to the smell. It was clear as day. It was the smell of decomposition. My body ran as cold as ice. I instantly went to check on the security cameras. I went a bit too fast and knocked one of the buttons on the whole system. Rather than an error or a mechanical buzz, I was greeted with vision. There was a night mode on these cameras after all. Without wasting time, I made sure to flip through each camera, analyzing each and every single one. I noticed one of them was out of place. Normally the camera closest to our house was stationed high on a nearby tree. This was a smart move, as the height allowed better vision and it was less likely that somebody would spot it. But not this time. Instead, the camera was now lying on the ground, still facing the front door, but not on its original spot. As I watched that camera, I heard what sounded like footsteps on the crunchy leaves. It was fall when this incident happened. No sooner than I heard those footsteps, 
the camera went dead, with the sound of clinking metal. I didn't wait. I ran down the stairs and got to work locking up the cabin the best I could. Safely securing the door, the windows, every exit or entrance that I could think of. I made my way down to my brother's gun safe, unlocking it at once and retrieving the hunting rifle he had stored away. I thought maybe the thing would give up. I had the place locked up tight, and I was armed. And for the next 20 minutes or so, all I heard was silence. Until I didn't. It broke my window. My body froze to the floor as the sound of shattering glass replayed several times in my brain like a broken record. I heard it. Footsteps creeping up the hard wooden staircase. It sounded so human, you would mistake it for any other man. And that's probably the scariest thing of all. The air went as cold as ice, as the smell of rot filled my nostrils. It was approaching. I hid under the bed, making sure to point my rifle far enough so I could shoot, but not far enough to where it could be seen. I then heard the door slowly creak open. As the same black liquid spilled onto the floor, I saw this intruder was wearing boots, smeared with the same substance. I knew it was right over me. I didn't know if it knew where I was. Cautiously, I slowly peeked over the opposite side making sure to not make eye contact. It was peering over my bed, staring intently at it. But the thing itself, that's what scares me the most. It was human shaped. If it wasn't for its other features, you could mistake it as an average person. The normality is lost. The second you look at it in the face, it had no eyes, only black watery eye holes. It secreted the black liquid at a semi-frequent rate. Its face was colored in a weird shade of bluey purple. It almost looked like a corpse. I knew if I had a shot at taking this thing out, it would be now. I quickly shot out from under my bed, accidentally bumping into my desk. I saw the thing's face quickly whip around to see me. Wasting no time, I shot my shot. But I missed. The rifle's recoil knocked me down. It wasted no time. It pounced onto me and tried to consume me. I barely managed to barrel out of the way, but I earned a nasty slash to the side of my stomach. Its fingers were almost bone-like at the end. Very little skin, or whatever it was that covered the being, was on the fingers. I fought fast. I grabbed my bedside lamp and smashed it over the thing. It didn't scream, nor shout, or even cry in pain. It just absorbed the blow. I heard a nasty crack as I clearly must have broken something. And I saw that its neck was out of shape, hanging at an unnatural angle. I backed away and fled downstairs, making sure to reload the rifle when I got somewhere safe. I hid in the pantry, pointing my rifle directly at the door. I wasn't going to miss this time. I heard the thing progress down the stairs again. As I heard footsteps enter into the kitchen, I heard a sickening crunch. I gagged at the sound. Clearly the thing must have reset its own neck. My fingers twitched slightly as I tried to hold my index finger firmly over the trigger. I heard footsteps approach me. The 
then silence. The only thing audible was my heavy breathing and my occasional feet tapping out of anxiety. And before I knew it, <laughs> the door was kicked down. Instantly being met with the hard wood, I took the full brunt of the impact, which broke my nose. I dropped my rifle and immediately dove down to retrieve it. I felt my stomach being punctured. Helplessly, I watched the creature stick its digits further into my chest, staining more and more of its body with my crimson blood. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. All I could do was watch. There was no mistaking it. This was no man. Not anymore. I saw the thing's other hand reach for the bluish part of its face. I watched as the creature tore it away. It was skin, not a mask. Underneath I saw decomposition. I was greeted with a human face, midway through black putrefaction. It had no eyes, rotting gnashing teeth, and the black liquid erupted onto the floor. I, I couldn't tell you. But this was a corpse that began to walk. It wasn't a zombie, but it was clearly something more. The black liquid was its blood, turned black due to further stages of decay. It moved me closer to its mouth, allowing it to spray my hair and face with the disgusting black blood. It raised me high into the air, exposing my stomach. It was clear what it wanted to do. However, it never got the chance. My ears exploded into a cacophony of audio as a loud gunshot rang about. My brother, Edwin, he came back. I stored it long enough for him to return. I felt the fingers in my chest retract leaving me stranded to the floor, helplessly trying to stop my bleeding. The next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital. And now you know. I really don't remember anything else besides this. All I do know is that my brother is still alive, but he's not in a good state. I know you're probably not going to listen to me, but do not pursue that being. Me and my brother barely managed to escape with our lives, but as I know, you will follow him. Just remember this. If you see him, it's already too late.